Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Welcome to my ongoing series focusing on some of the coolest add-ons available for the Godot game engine. And today we have one of the coolest of the cool. This is Phantom Camera, probably one of the most useful add-ons you're going to see. This was heavily inspired by Unity Cinema Machine. Uh, it is available at phantom-camera.dev. And what you're going to find immediately is that this thing has very good documentation. I mean, very, very good documentation. Not something you often see in the world of open source or in game dev or open source game dev, especially in the world of add-ons for open source game dev. So you're going to have really good documentation for both the 2D and 3D camera controls. And yes, this guy supports both 2D and 3D cameras, and it does all kinds of things for you, animations, tweening, and so on. We're going to jump in with a quick demonstration, and then I'm going to jump back over to the GitHub repository where they've got a ton of examples that show you exactly what Phantom Camera is capable of. But I'm pretty sure you're going to be impressed by this one. So let's start off with a demo. So here we are in a 2D scene of really straightforward and simple. The phantom camera has been added. So uh, phantom camera is added as a node. You're going to find it's available here. Phantom camera. There is a 2D version of it. There is also a 3D version of it available. So phantom camera 3D and phantom camera 2D. That's generally all you need to use this one. Otherwise, basically just clone the repository, add it into the add-ons folder of your project, go into project settings, plugins, and enable phantom camera. Once you have done that, uh, you will find inside of your project, you will have phantom camera in the add-ons folder. So add-ons Phantom Camera, and inside that you will find a ton of examples. I'm going to show you just two very basic examples, one for 2D, one for 3D. The one you see in front of you, this is 2D. It has a Phantom Camera um, 2D applied to it. Let's go ahead and run this scene, and it's pretty straightforward. As you walk around, it follows your character. There's a lot of things that do this kind of stuff, but you're going to notice here, when I read, it's got the ability to zoom in on your thing, and here we're going to jump to an inventory screen, again, another dynamic zoom with a tween for doing the animation. This is, again, the simplest of examples here. It can do other things like try and frame uh, multiple objects into the camera shot at the same time, and more so. Again, they have done an excellent job of illustrating the capabilities of this guy on their GitHub page, so I'm going to just wait for that to show you other capabilities of this. Now we're going to switch over to 3D. Now, 3D is kind of even more impressive in the demo, but this is still the basic example. So this is 3D example scene. You're going to see here the camera is added. In this case, it is a camera uh, 3D. There are multiples in this scene, I believe, actually. But what you're going to find is what you can do is run this, and you're going to get a Resident Evil style. Oh, I do that every time. All right, I'll run the current scene, not the current project. There we go. So you're going to get a Resident Evil style tank control and dynamic cinematic camera. So you can see as we move our character around in the world, you can see here I'm within a proximity of this other character. So I'm going to do F to interact with them. And you can see it's going to tween to an over the shoulder shot. So if you're doing kind of a conversation, you need to frame two objects into the scene. You can do that kind of thing. The other thing you're going to notice here is as I switch rooms. So here we are in this one room. I got no control over my camera, by the way. So it's using, again, that Resident Evil style cinematic camera. And see, it'll switch shots. And I switch rooms here, switch shots again, over here, switch shots. So it can handle that cinematic approach to things. And again, it can handle the programmatic stuff as well. So you got to zoom in, zoom out if you're doing dialogue. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the very simple aspects of this camera. There's other cool things as well. So you can frame in just parts of the shot where it'll stay within them. Uh, when you're dealing with the 3D, you'll also notice you have a phantom camera tab down here, which will actually show you your camera. Uh, and you can actually move it around, see the preview of it, see the limitations of it down here. I always like to have a preview window. I I wish this was built into Godot for their own cameras, other than that little floating and preview option. Having a dedicated window for your camera, especially showing the limitations of it, uh, very, very nice. So that's definitely one of the nice features of this guy. So let's go head on back over to the web side of things, and I will show you uh, some even more impressive stuff. So once again, the documentation is excellent, and that is very nice. So if you come down here, you check out um, some kind of functionality, say camera mode 2D, Come on down, you're gonna see you get code examples, shows you how to use particular things. So if you need to do a tweening example, shows you how these things work. So everything is very well documented. We head on over to the GitHub side of things, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about it. First off, we're gonna learn it is very frequently updated. The last update happened yesterday as of filming this. Uh, you can see once again, it is a 2D and 3D dynamic con camera control and movement system with tweening uh, inspired by Cinemachine for Unity. Uh, it is MIT licensed, and if you scroll on down here, 
uh, you're going to find some uh, more details of it. So again, heavily inspired by Unity package called Cinemachine. Allows for simple behaviors such as following and looking at specific nodes with an optional smooth dampened movement. Advanced logic like reframing itself to keep multiple nodes in view and dynamically animate between specific camera positions. So let's go check some of these examples. Here is their basic example. You're going to see the camera is gated. So if you're within the restraints here, it's actually following you to them. So as it, it hits the boundaries, then it moves the camera. But within that dead zone, it doesn't do anything. Here you can see group following where you have uh, multiple objects. See that guy on the left? He is always being kept in the frame. So as you're moving around, so if you're doing multiplayer, a great setup in that regard. Scrolling down here, we got a couple more examples of what this guy is capable of. So here, 2D follow, we already saw that. Simple 3D follow um, around the scene and so on. Again, pretty simple. It's literally just following that object as it goes around the scene. Uh, we've got other options here. So here is 2D following with a group. Once again, you've got these two entities. And when this guy gets to the extent, the camera zooms out to accomplish and, and to encompass all of the targets within the scene. Very cool thing, especially if you're doing like a single screen multiplayer style setup. This is basically doing the work for you. Over here, we have 3D following group. Basically the exact same thing. You've got multiple different players in the world, and they're all being framed within the camera, uh, just in 3D this time. Scrolling down here, we have 2D following a path. This is the camera itself will follow a path. So while the, the player moves, we're staying on this path to find near the bottom. Same thing for 3D. Uh, you've got the same, comp uh, same functionality. The camera follows a path that you've defined. Uh, as you are moving around in the world. Again, useful for uh, cinematic shots. I think that you'd use something like this for the setup we saw earlier on. Uh, we've got framing. So this is going to keep it as best as possible within the frame. So there you can see it's just doing its, its best to keep the target within the boundaries of the zone. No limitation there. And then when we physically get below it, it can't do anything. So it's doing as close as it can get. Exact same functionality when you're dealing with the 3D world. Uh, basically, it's going to just do its best to keep you within this, but this middle part will be a dead zone. Again, very useful for making a smooth style camera. Uh, no third person for uh, 2D for obvious reasons. Uh, 3D, uh, we saw a little bit of this in action, so you can actually go ahead and see a third person style camera if this video decides to cooperate. All right, so here we go. So you can see third person, when the walls get in the way or you need to zoom in over the shoulder, it controls that as well. So again, if you're making like a Gears of War style third person type game, the camera has all that functionality built in for you. Like I said, this thing can, handles like an impressive number of games. Uh, you have the ability to do 2D zooming. We saw this when you look at the inventory and then it zooms the camera in to show you the inventory and, and um, the, Z, the UI layer beside the person. Uh, straightforward, obviously 2D zooming is not available in 3D, whereas 3D zooming is not available, well, 3D look at, it's not available in 2D. And this is gonna focus the camera in, in 3D on a specific object. Um, and yeah, and then we've got uh, grouping. So looks at the center of a collection of targets. Here we're gonna see that in action. So it's got, I think the two blues and the red, it kind of keeps it focused so that they always stay in the middle. And then we've got tweening. Tweening literally is short form for in-betweening. It's a process of making smoothly going from A to B. So basically if you wanted to move or scale or slide or something from one point to another and do it smoothly, you could give it like the source, the destination, and then a tween handles the smoothing between. Here is some 2D tweening going on. So you see as the camera is zooming out, you can see in the background the, the type of the transition that it is performing uh, and the speed of that actual tween. Here is the same thing in 3D. Again, you will see the transition type and the duration of it in the background. So it's sign, um, circ uh, circos, uh, and then uh, so on. So you've got a variety of different tweens available to you here as well. And then we've got the viewfinder. The viewfinder is that um, cool functionality that you could have at the bottom where you'll have it uh, preview the camera and it will actually show so that you can see the various different uh, restraints that have been set up for this. And as it's moving around, it is updating the preview there as well. This is one of those things, once again, I really wish that was just built into Godot. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with um, the 2D camera yet, but uh, I think that is going to be added soon. But you see as he's switching the dead zone, the dead zone is being updated in the preview here as well. Very useful stuff. Uh, and yeah, that's just the gist of it. Again, all the example scenes are part of this project. If you 
want to grab it, once again, just come on in here, uh, go to the very top here, grab the, the GitHub link here, do a git clone, and then this directory to take the add-ons folder from that, drop that into your newly created project. And then finally, all you have left to do is inside of your project, go into project, project settings, plugins, and then enable it. And if it's not showing up here, either it's not in the right add-ons folder or something went wrong that way. Um, and then once you've got it enabled, just head on down into the add-ons, you'll find phantom camera. And inside of that, you will find examples. And inside of the examples, you will find both 2D and 3D examples, showcasing pretty much everything we just saw those little videos of. Very cool work. So if you're looking for, um, and everybody has a camera, basically every game ever made has a camera of some form. And I think you could probably see some functionality in this guy that you need. Uh, so it's again, it's one of the most impressive add-ons I've come across. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Phantom Camera. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.